All right, everybody, welcome back here to our Carcass album review series. We're about to knock out the last one of the 90s and really the last album these guys have put out for hell quite some time since until like 2013 or 14, something like that. So, yeah, we've already um, blasted through the 80s and most of the 90s stuff until this one right here, 1995, Swan Song. Was very surprised I was able to find this original press here for such a good price, but um, man, another pride, prized uh, possession here of mine on vinyl. I mean, man, any of their stuff's pretty freaking hard to find, and uh, I was very fortunate to be able to get all their stuff, um, original press vinyl for a decent price, because I mean, man, and most of it was on, uh, you know, a little shout out to Discogs, that website, if you guys are record, CD collectors, anything like that, they can, they can hook you up. But yeah, this one here, I mean, we got a kind of a, well, not kind of, really, a strange album cover here. Uh, not going with the gore this time. It's more of just very strange, you know, bird face here. Some kids standing in the corner. Parents watching TV. Really strange. I like it. It's weird. But, I mean, I do like it. It's a cool looking album cover. Really weird. Um, strange looking. But, um yeah we've got uh we've got quite the album here uh this one you know I, like last time we were talking about heart work go leaning more towards the melodic death metal you know um death and roll kind of thing this one uh leans into that heavily um i don't know if again it'd be i mean i think this one definitely could be labeled as death and roll um in a way um, but at the same time, of course, you, of course, it's heavy as all get out because it's got that, that death in front of it, right? So, um, it, I mean, this one leans further into it than probably any of their albums. Um, and we started off with Keep On Rotting in the Free World. And I'll never forget the first time I was ever going to listen to this album and I looked at the track list and I'm like, what, is this going to be some kind of funny cover of... Keep on rocking in the free world, you know? Nope. It is a fantastic song. Um, not that the other one isn't, right? Even though I don't really care for Keep on Rocking in the Free World all that much, right? But keep on. I'll, I'll definitely take Keep on Rotting in the Free World because this is the perfect choice for an opener on here. Um, fantastic, fantastic. Well, I mean, one of the best songs off here, period. This just shows you right now these guys know how to do this death and roll melodic death metal thing because, and it's crazy seeing how extreme they started off, right? Um, going to something like this. And this, I mean, the riff on this one, it's got like an uplifting, uh, like upbeat chorus and, and riff that's going on in here that is just, man, instant headbanger with Keep On Riding in the Free War. One of my favorite Carcass songs. I dare say, of all time. I mean, it's just fantastic, man. It gets you immediately, gets you pumped up. And then we get Tomorrow Belongs to Nobody. Another freaking heavy hitter right here. Right, uh, again, one of my favorites off here. Um, uh, this is another one where the riff is just, it shines, man. A as these guys started leaning um, towards this uh, more melodic approach, some, their riffs just got really stand out. I mean, this is... One of the best damn riffs off the album is Tomorrow Belongs to Nobody. And it's, it is, um, and, you know, while some of these do lean more, more into the, uh, death and roll kind of thing than others, some of them still kind of venture away a little bit from it. Um, but Tomorrow Belongs to Nobody, I'd say that's one of the, uh, probably one of the heaviest ones off here, um, for yeah, as I'm looking at it here, I mean, I, I would say it's up there uh, for that, but it's one of my favorites off here, like top top three or four. Then we go with Black Star. I mean, the, on a roll. Uh, the lyrics are it's pretty funny, uh, you know, uh, and I love the groove of this one. But the lyrics are kind of funny, like when he's like Twinkle Twinkle Black Star, like it's like you know, it's pretty freaking funny. Uh, I never really noticed uh, that's what he was saying, um, what Jeff Walker was saying during that. Uh, chorus of this one but like on, on this list and I was like is he saying twinkle twinkle black star 
So it's kind of funny hearing that in such a, like, you know, an aggressive, you know, death growl way. Um, but this is another one where the riff is just freaking sick. And uh, another just top tier uh, carcass track for me. One of my favorites off here. Same with Cross My Heart. This one, oh my god. This one's one of the heaviest ones off here as well. Uh, just the whole, you know, to use it, the term again, just the groove of this thing. Um, this is another one that's so freaking hooky. I mean, this one, this album probably has the, is probably their hookiest, catchiest material out there. Um, very, very memorable choruses. And I love just the flow of Cross My Heart. I mean, it just, it, it's it's brutal. Brutally melodic um, off this one here. Let me go with Child's Play. Another solid track. Can't go wrong with this one. Love the solo in it. Um, probably one of my least, probably my least favorite off of this whole side A here. Uh, this first side of the album. But I mean, that's, you know, still an awesome song. But, I mean, you close out side A with probably my second favorite off here, if not my first favorite, Room 101. What a brutal freaking track, man. Oh, this is a deep cut, carcass deep cut right there that I'm just all about. Love, love, love Room 101. Um, or, as they say, Room 101, you know. Just incredible, um, you know, almost anthemic kind of sounding in a way, um, heavy, heavy freaking hitter that is just top shelf carcass and one of my favorite, one of my favorite songs, um, of theirs of all time. And I could say that for, uh, several off this side A here for sure. Um, then we hop on over to side B, another one of the heaviest ones off here, Polarized. Love this one. Um, a little bit of a faster one than I would say maybe some of these other ones. Uh, but I mean, they've all got that kind of speed to them, but you know, obviously not as fast as stuff like off of, um, reek of putrefaction or anything like that. But yeah, another really, really solid one. Then we go with generation hexed another heavy one here. Um, that it seems like those for uh, the first two right off the bat here are two of the heaviest ones off the album. Um, with Polarized and Generation Hexed, and the lyrics are just brilliant in a lot of these songs, too, off this record, um, really, especially like Generation Hexed, I, and, and like I said on Black Star, the Twinkle Twinkle Black Star thing, um, this brilliant, you know, kind of comedic in a way on that one in particular, but yeah, no, brilliant lyrics that are really cool on this one, Generation Hexed, um, that makes it, I mean, a big standout on this side B here. Then we go with Firm Hand, I'd say probably it, it, it ranks pretty, I mean, it's an awesome song, right? But it does rank pretty low um, as far as my favorites on the album go. Maybe my second least favorite uh, to, or my least favorite. But, you know, if you, that that's like if I have to pick my least favorite here. Um, I, I would say it's maybe that one or one coming up. But, uh. Rock the Vote is another one. This is the big highlight here off of the side B. And I'm wondering why they have uh, they have it. If you can see on the back there where it's got it like starred out like it's maybe it's supposed to say like fuck the vote or something. You know, I and the, it's like a joke on that or something. Like, you know, blurring it out with the stars. It, I don't know. But Rock the Vote, awesome, awesome one. That is uh, one of the catchier and hookier ones off this side B here. Then we go with Don't Believe a Word. Another solid one that I would maybe say is my least favorite or my second least favorite off here. Uh, uh, that one or Firm Hand. But those, again, those are both really good songs. Um, like, no problems with them whatsoever. It's just compared to a lot of that other stronger um, stuff we've got all over this thing. I would have to say those are probably some of my least favorite ones. Then we get the final track here with Go to Hell. This is another one that is like in the like the top three heaviest ones off this record here. And a great way to end it too. I mean, it's brutal as all get out. I mean, it's called Go to Hell, you know. And it's telling you to go to hell. And it's just a fantastic song. Um, and a great upbeat, just, you know, shouting at you closer that you can't go wrong with. And one of the best ones off side B here, for sure. But yeah, um, you know, this is a really clean production too i forgot to mention that the, the 
production on here is just phenomenal. Very, very clean sounding, um, which they've really, um, they're, I'd say it's, it's between this and Heartwork for their best production so far, as far as like the cleanliness of the production goes. Of course, they were wanting to go for a more muddier, nastier, grimier look on the first few records. Um, but as far as like the cleanliness and just clean sound of, uh, of each instrument being able to hear it. This one might be the best produced up to this point that we're at here. Um, but yeah, you know, I've seen a lot of people, well, I wouldn't even say a lot of people. I've, I've seen some people kind of, kind of dog on this one a bit being like, Oh, it's, they went too far into the, you know, death and roll melodic death metal side of things as where hard work didn't, you know, again, it didn't quite delve as far as this one did with it. But Swan Song here, I mean, I don't think there's this one's too far off from Heartwork and, and, and some of the melodies and the hookiness of some of them. I mean, you, t you take a look at a track like No Love Lost off of uh, Heartwork, and I think it would fit flawlessly on this album here with, you know, no problems at all. Um, but, you know, maybe that's just me. I, I mean, I know I I've seen this one be not necessarily ever trashed on like, oh, I hate this album, blah, blah, blah. But I've seen people rank it pretty low, um, which y'all see where I end up ranking it uh, once we get to that point. But as you can tell, I freaking love this album. I have zero issues with it all. I think side A in particular on here, that first side on this one is just bulk, super strong. And obviously I love the stuff off side B too, but that whole side A it is just, I mean, it is, that's where it's at. Um, keep on riding in the free world. Tomorrow belongs to nobody. Black Star, Cross My Heart, Room 101. I mean, all those are like my, some of my favorites um, off here. Like, and really, all of those would probably take up the good top four or five spots of my favorite. And again, not to, not to say I don't like the stuff off side, be like Polarize and Rock the Vote, Go to Hell, you know, Generation Hack, stuff all great stuff. I think this album's freaking fantastic. Um, and I, and really, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about it. Uh, especially, you know, I saw some of y'all like saying that Heartwork's your favorite one. Uh, so I'm really curious to see if you guys are a fan, if, if you're a fan of this one. Um, since, at least in my opinion, I kind of find them similar. Uh, re really similar, honestly, as far as the, just this one took that what hard work kind of started with the melodies and everything like that and kind of took it uh and carried on with it but yeah i think this was a really really great album for the guys to go out on um until their eventual return you know which is what we'll look at next time was surgical steel and if i'm not mistaken that dropped in 2013 so i mean man over 10 years almost 20 years almost a 20 year hiatus for carcass man um and, you know, I wasn't into these guys back in 2013, right, when they dropped that album. I didn't really know, hell, even who they were back then. But, you know, I'm sure if I if I was into them and then they, I, I can't even imagine the excitement people got for the return um, for Carcass with Surgical Steel. So, yeah, we'll be uh, taking a look at that one next time when we enter in this newer era of Carcass that, you know, the return era started back in 2013 and has continued going you know we even got an album i think what not last year but i think the year before with torn arteries so that guys yeah, still going strong and hopefully we get a new album of them soon right um i would be all on board for that but yeah uh let's talk about swan song down there because i know this one can be a little controversial again i've never seen anybody straight up trash it but i've seen some people um kind of be like ah worse than their discography and stuff like that before um, but me on the other hand, I absolutely love this album. Don't have any issues with it whatsoever. Love the production, love the catchy hookiness of, of songs, uh, of, of the songs off here. Love the, the melodies off here, the solos, which by the way, before we close it out, yeah, the solos, some of the best damn solos the guys have done. Um, I think I love the solo and keep on rotting in the free world, man. I mean, oh, incredible incredible solo but um yeah guys uh that's swan song for you 1995 
close out the 90s in this era for Carcass, but yeah, they thankfully were in a time and a place in history where Carcass made their return in 2013. So we'll take a look at Surgical Steel next time. Let's talk about this thing down there in them comments. And um, love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. But anyways, like, subscribe, and comment. And thanks for watching, guys.